What's up everybody, it's Trevor here, author of the book 22 Houses It's Not a Home, and where I kind of go through my life growing up in various different foster homes and uh, an orphanage and, and kind of lessons learned along the way and ultimately a story of resiliency kind of overcoming some of that stuff. And um, today what I want to talk about is a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the topics that are, are discussed in the overarching community of foster care. Uh, and one of those topics happens to be uh, reintegration. So what is it? What is reintegration? Well, reintegration is when a child is brought back into the family or brought back with, a, with the, the parent after a stint in child's, uh, child care or, I'm sorry, foster care. So this could be um, a child that's in short-term foster care. It could be long-term foster homes. It could be a child that's living with family that's kind of... Um, administered to through the state. It could be a transient situation where a child's living in permanent foster care or an orphanage, but the, the parent can periodically get the child and take them out for birthdays, holidays, and different things like that. So let's go ahead and talk about two things uh, that you wanna just be careful of. One of them is something that you should do uh, or I recommend doing, and then one thing to try to stay away from that you, you, you wanna be very careful of during this kind of process. So let's talk about the good one first. So what should you do? During the reintegration process, it's really stressful. It can be really tough. And I think there tends to be a, a, a tendency from what I've seen and experienced and seen around me in this, in this foster care world to kind of sweep things under the rug. You know, they notice little Susie's back. Let's not talk about it, right? Let's not talk about Bruno. We don't want to disturb the waters too much. They just got back. The, the mother or the father just got the child. Let's leave well enough alone. They're here. I think children are really intuitive. I know I was. So the... The fact that you spend, this child spent many nights away wondering, were they missed? Were they, did the, did the parents care? You know, what was going on, you know, with all that? Did anybody notice that I was even gone? And, you know, with the conversation with the parents, maybe you guys come up with a plan with the extended family, you talk about it, and maybe a way to work that into the conversation. You were missed. You were, your, your presence was missed. We're so happy that you're here. Um, what can we do? Can we, what can I get for you? What do you need? Uh, you know, just letting that child know that they were missed can go a long way. And, and children are smarter than you think. You know, they, they can pick up on things. So uh, it's something to think about and maybe try to work into the equation somehow. Now let's talk about something that you might want to avoid. Okay, so one of the things to stay away from during this extremely stressful time with reintegration, we want to make the number one priority, I would say, the child psychological safety. So what is psychological safety? So psych psychological safety is that feeling that you're secure. You're safe and secure, you're not going anywhere, everything's okay. Uh, the example that I'll use is a relationship. Say you've ever been in a relationship, or in a relationship, uh, you've ever been into a fight or argument or things aren't kind of meshing so well, and maybe you walk away for a little while or you go on a drive or you just kind of step away. If you have psychological safety in a relationship, you know with 110% certainty that no matter what happens, as soon as you go home, as soon as you meet back up together, you're going to work it out. You're going to stay together. It's going to be fine. And, and that's the same thing that the child needs when they're reintegrating to their uh, family. They really need to know that no matter what happens, I'm secure. As I said, this is a really stressful time for the parent and extended family and the child, most certainly the child. So one of the things that can kind of interfere with that psychological safety in a, 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 an actually understandably frustrating situation, maybe the parent uh, threatens the child. Hey, you know, clean your room, Susie, or you can go back to foster care, or you'll go back to the orphanage, or do you want them to come get you again? These are very real threats that are given pretty carelessly. And I'll tell you, they do a lot of damage to a child's psychological safety. So if at all possible, I would suggest trying to find some way to work through discipline uh, that doesn't include uh, threats to a child uh, and not being able to stay there. So anyways, well, I hope this was informative. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for coming by again. I'm Trevor, author of 22 Houses is Not a Home. Love it if you would support our work by picking up a copy for yourselves. And uh, if you're interested in this type of content, click the link in the description uh, for more information on this topic. Until next time, thanks.